the mistakes have overtaken them. So the Bible says, you can't wait for them to turn. They may never change. Did you hear what I said? If you and I wait for them to change, they may never change. They may never change. No, pastor, they must change. If they don't change, we can't, uh, we can't pastor. We're wasting our time with them. No, they may never change until people in our ministry who are so-called spiritual. I sing praises to your name, spiritual. Reading the Bible every day, spiritual. Giving their tithes, spiritual. Regional overseers, spiritual. Elders, spiritual. Pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, spiritual. Such spiritual people, worship leaders, musicians, choristers, people in the front row, and the second row, and the last row, and the middle rows. We who are spiritual, restore. Whose responsibility is it? To restore the man, spiritual people in the church. We are the ones who are spiritually mature. We have to grab a hold of the drunkard in this church. If you see their face, you will know that Johnny is walking under the bed. <laughs> are you hearing me? And Benson is next to the hedge. And there is a gold kind of leaf somewhere. Are you hearing me? You have to grab a hold of them with love. And say, brother, I know you're struggling. Let me help you. But while you are going to help them, help the same gender. <laughs> oh... See, you can't handle the truth. Help the same gender. We don't want to find a 59-year-old man who has only 18 more teeth coming. <laughs> now watch this, watch this. Don't get offended, all right? Coming to a 17-year-old girl. Hello. <laughs> You're failing in your studies, no? I can give you tuition. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> tuition. My precious people of God, we don't make such mistakes in this ministry. Come on, talk to me. Oh, come on, talk to me, somebody. We don't make such mistakes. We who are spiritual, we find out the boundary through which we can restore such people and work within those boundaries. Come on, somebody. As a leader, you don't visit a house when the woman is alone. No, you don't. You don't counsel with a room closed and curtains closed. We don't do things like this in this ministry. We restore people with boundaries. Glory to God. Lest ye who are restoring people collapse at the boundary. Because Galatians 6 1 says, As you restore such a one in the spirit of what? Meekness. Meekness means power under control. You don't lord over them. You don't say, I'm better than you kind of spirit. No. That's a self-righteous spirit. That is not of God. Talk to me, somebody. Oh, brother, how can you do this? No, oh, beloved, you can't restore people like that. My brother, don't worry. That's how you start. Considering yourself that you are saved by grace, lest you also be tempted by trying to restore somebody. So here goes. Number one. Spiritual men and women in our church. Have a responsibility from today. To restore. People who have been overtaken by a fault. If no one comes to you. You must reach out to them. If you're the person that's been overtaken by a fault. You find out who you can really Go to as a father, a spiritual father in the church and talk to that person. Could be me, it could be there are countless hundreds of people. You got to meet them. Can you say amen to that? In the story of the prodigal son, when the prodigal son returns, in Luke chapter 15, verse number 20 to 23, you will find that the father restored the son in four stages. 
the father restored the son, the spiritually minded man or woman, in four simple stages, is able to restore anybody. Can I share those four stages with you? We are still on point number one. What is point number one? Restored by spiritual men. Now the prodigal son is returning home. Verse 20 through 23. Read. And he, and he arose, arose and came, and to, came his to his father. father. I can't hear you. But, but when, when he was, was yet a great way off, off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to call thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring, bring forth the, the best, best robe and put, put it on, on him, and, and put, put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring, bring hither the, the fatted fat calf, and kill it, and, and let, let us eat, and be merry. merry. The prodigal son is returning home. Everybody familiar with the prodigal son story? Okay. Prodigal daughter story? No. Okay. That's all included in this story. Yeah. Prodigal son slash daughter returning. Okay, now the dear father, watch this, watch this now. The dear daddy, as, as a father, only a father can do this. That's why you must carry a father's heart, beloved. A father's heart. Without a father's heart, you can't restore people. These so-called spiritual people of the church must carry a father's heart, beloved. Not a teacher's heart, not a professor's heart. Not the heart of a degree holder or a PhD. No, the heart of a father. These are my own children. That must be your mentality and attitude. This is my own child that, is, that has fallen. This is my own child. I went into our King's Revival children's home on Friday and I told my wife also, I said, Bubs, when I saw those children, I don't know, I visited them after some time. Two of those kids don't have a mother or a father. Three of them. And they were right in front. They were doing a dance act. And Mikhail and I were seated. Nanga was with Melanie at the back. And Mikhail was laughing. And we were having a nice time. And there was this sweet little girl in front. With the brightest smile. And then there was a little boy at the back. Akash or something his name was. He's doing a fantastic dance. Both of them were, were the ones that my eyes caught. Throughout an entire crowd of children. This is our own home in Uswata Keyam. And when I saw those two children, I asked my auntie, who was the chairperson, I said, Who are those two kids? Do they have parents? I said, Jerome, both of them, one is a tsunami child, the other child doesn't even have a mother or a father. And beloved, I couldn't take it. I just couldn't take it. My heart just. Something happened to me. I had to fight back the tears. I told Melanie, come here. I said, Bob, these kids have moved me today like I've never been moved. Only a father can be moved. And I pray that every spiritually minded person in our church will have a father's heart and mind. Because when the prodigal son was coming back home, to me those two children were like my own. You get it? That's why I broke down. So as the father saw the prodigal son coming back, the Bible says in verse number 20 and through 23, there were four things the father did to restore the son. And we who are spiritual, as we leap out to restore people, we need to Perhaps follow these four steps. Are you ready for them? Number one, the father saw him and had compassion. compassion. Stage number one. Without compassion, no restoration ever begins in anybody. All right, five coughs and anybody in agreement? It's the word of God. You got to agree. Compassion. My precious people of God, many people are trying to restore people through sympathy. Pauni. Unari udawakkaramudha. 
पाऊने दैट इज नॉट कंपैशन पाऊने पाऊने एनीबॉडी कैन से इवन नॉन क्रिश्चियंस आर सेइंग पाऊने मुनारी पिना कर्म को माय प्रेशियस पीपल ऑफ गॉड कंपैशन इज नॉट सिंपैथी कंपैशन डस समथिंग अबाउट what they are moved about sympathy can come to a funeral and say deeper sympathies and not do anything hmm you getting it compassion you have to start restoring people with compassion first number 2 the father ran fell on his neck and kissed him that's what i call demonstration he ran it was a demonstrative act he fell on his neck it was a an act do you call it a verb yes a doing verb it was a verb there was action involved in restoration and the father kissed him do you know that people get restored if you only hug them come on somebody do you know tilanka where are you come Sri Lanka has had a tough morning because I taught on worship and he was he was really feeling I think oh no I didn't do my job right so now if he is hurt inside now watch this what did I do no sooner I came to the pulpit today I looked at him and said Sri Lanka are you all right <laughs> okay No but can you see there's a little bit of sadness So now what you can do you must come and you must demonstrate Tilanka don't take it too seriously I love you and be restored You see that that is exactly what the father did The father saw the son number 1 compassion compassion Tilanka you may be seated Compassion number 2 came running fell on his neck and kissed him that is demonstration you cannot restore people without demonstrating your love for them not by roses and chocolates and valentine clementine turpentine hearts <laughs> my precious people of god love is not for number 14 love is for number 1 2 3 for the gazillions and the zillions and beloved for eternity love god has shown us how to love people for he himself demonstrated his compassion while we were yet sinners he demonstrated his love while we were yet sinners christ died for us it was a demonstration of love and sometimes love is cheap in our church circles today brother i love you brother mata oka kanna puluwan nan idi oka kiya kiya inna hamadama mata paang rahatta lak nae kedara brother hama thisama kiya i love you that fellow who has fallen will fall further because he's getting angry now mata allow now mata paang rahatta lak aran dena allow am i making sense step 1 compassion let them know that you have some kind of love for them number 2 demonstrate this is why i said same gender because you can't fall on the next <laughs> i apologize to people who are over 55 years of age <laughs> i do respect you and kiss him And then the Bible says in verse number 21 look at it it gets interesting the father said unto or the son said unto him father i have my god my god my god this is what happens to people who have fallen beloved repentance is automatic when you have compassion and when you demonstrate your love they will themselves say ane botal dekak thiyena anda yata ra botal ek thiyena wahaloda ane tawa gene kinno anith anda yata ane tawa gene kinno dubai wala tawa gene kinno maladive ne muda yata tawa ek kene kinno ane mata sama wenna pastor i beloved they They will come out of their closets skeletons will come out of their closets first you have to have compassion and then demonstration they will say like zacchaeus i am a sinner i need forgiveness but what the church is doing today 
is this. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Revelation. And my subject tonight is the lake of fire. You follow what I'm saying? Come on somebody, are you following what I'm saying? You sinner, you wretched sinner, how can you live like this? You will burn in hell. <laughs> You're not letting me preach tonight. <laughs> so pastor, what? You must not tell people to repent. Yes! But if you just have compassion and demonstration, repentance will automatically come, is what I'm saying. You want your child to change. Compassion and demonstration. Because the sinner knows they are unworthy anyway. So when they sense unworthy love, unworthy demonstration, they will break inside and when they are broken God can easily pour into them now his liquid love to restore them beloved this is the time this boy is getting restored hallelujah now after that when he says I'm not worthy to be called your son verse 22 says but the father said to his servants come on bring forth the best robe Put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Third stage of restoration, investment. Investment. Investing in the person you're trying to restore. Bring the best robe. Bring the ring. Bring shoes. Put it on him. Invest in him. Compassion demonstration and investment how can you restore somebody without investing in them sometimes you may have to take them out and get them some good clothes you might have to buy them a cup of coffee and sit with them for two hours restoring takes time and it happens in stages <laughs> 